All right, it's time to go over episode 14 of Common Rider Geats. Uh, I've been trying to make these videos shorter, but then we get an episode like this with so much story, character information, like oh, so much stuff going on that I'm like, there's no way I can make this a quick video because I have so many theories and like just reactions to certain things and ideas. And I'm like, this is going to be a long video. Uh, so episode 14, uh, after the last episode with, you know, Azuma, Buffa taking Ace's driver at the end, we saw that tw uh, twin cannon, like the jet and cannon, you know, command buckle form on Keats, which looked amazing. And I was like, what are we going to do in this one? That's going to like top everything. And then I was like, oh, we're going to get more information about, you know, the DGP, the game master and everything else and drive the plot more forward, which was great in this episode. There was parts in the beginning, uh, right off the bat, K was back. Sumeri doing the vlog is cool, but I want Kawa back making the vlog about what's going on. I miss that. I mean, at least we're getting someone doing it, but man, I want to see Kawa with the phone out being like, and then, you know, I, tr I trusted Ace again, and I didn't get screwed over. He gave me my buckle back and all of his, uh, it, the driver and all his buckles. Like, he's not that bad of a guy. Like, I want some stuff like that. But uh, one of the main things is... You know, seeing, once again, Sumeri, uh, Punk Jack, and the Game Master talking, and, you know, even Game Master says, it, good job, and, you know, Punk Jack says, yeah, Geats is definitely out, and Sumeri, once again, every episode, we're getting this doubt from her, where she's like, is this even what's best, and, once again, the Game Master reiterates, Geats has won so much that it started to be a nuisance, and I was like, hmm, okay, so carrying you know this whole sumery doubting even punk jack's body language i'm just like you know I, like i said in the last two to three videos where i viewed it, i'm like punk jack's gonna turn he's one of two things are happening like he's either going to turn on the game master or he's actually gonna eliminate ace that's the only two avenues for his storyline right now but we get so much more information about his backstory that i'm gonna get to but i want to try and keep my ideas and my thoughts in chronological order of the episode so to speak um, continuing everything else, you know, uh, there's a point where Kawa in the lounge uh, offers to let Ace borrow his driver to de de defeat the Jamato rider to get a new driver. And then even Punk Jack and Azuma, and I know I keep calling him Punk Jack because I forget his name. I, I always do. Uh, and they even say they stop and they're like, why are you going to let Ace win again? Like this, like you should be going for the win. Why are you, you're really going to let him win again? And I'm like. They, the, the Kawa stuff now, like his attitude change, you know, him wanting to actually win, him stepping up, not being so much of a pushover has been really good. Um, and the cool thing is we didn't really waste any time jumping right into the action of this episode, which I appreciate. Uh, we see Kawa with the command buckle finally using the first form. So he still has a sword and everything else with the other buckle attached to it. He's just laying waste, fighting both Jamato riders at once. And... I was really shocked because, and so I was like, Kawa, one of the Jamato actually talked, which was really cool, because uh, he even says, I have to win this. And then we get the flashback where Kawa's just like, realized it's the guy from episode two, I believe it was Ginpen, where he even said, I have to win this. And I was like, and he was like, was he imagining that? So once again, that's a callback to when we saw all those ID cores in the garden house, like the greenhouse with the gardener. So I was like, I have a feeling these Jamato riders like, and the Jamato are actual previous contestants that have been actually eliminated, not having their memories wiped and then sent back to the, the regular world. So I was like, okay, that was a subtle moving that plot forward. And I was like, okay, I'm really curious what else is going to happen. Um, a lot of dialogue between, uh, Ace and Punk Jack, uh, you know, Punk Jack, you know, saying, Hey, you're not going to beat the Jamato rider as a human. And, you know, he says, and finally admits, cause you know, it's been hinted at, but he finally admits, he's like, you know, they're both going to get eliminated. They're both getting taken out of this round. And he says he was specifically sent into the DGP to take Ace down to the point where he even said, yeah, even my, my desire card, I wrote you know, some BS on there that said no aspirations. And regardless of part of this deal, 
win or lose, as long as Ace doesn't get eliminated, he gets his memories back. And I was like, all right, this is, you know, more now that Ace knows this, but I feel like he already knew, obviously, because Ace always ends up somehow outsmarting everybody. That's been the theme of him, you know, sly as a fox and tricking people. So I feel like he already knew all this stuff. Um, we get um, a look finally at the boss. A little girl shows up, transform the boss. She has this pawn attack that makes you hallucinate and see things because Buffa thinks he's finally attacking her because she's splitting it to duplicate herself. But really, it was just Tycoon and Nako. And I was like, then she just pops up, takes all of them out. So I'm like, ooh, this is going to be a strong boss. Like, And with the whole hallucination, pollen, whatever, that's going to be intriguing to see more of throughout this episode. Um, we didn't really... So the garden dude, uh, I know he has a name. Someone mentioned his name. I already forgot. My bad. Um, we see him, you know, talking to a larger new biological form of a Jamato and talking to it. He's like, you're going to be my right hand from now on. And the Jamato talks back fully saying, I'd rather not be associated with you. And he even says, like, you've gotten better with your words. And he names this Jamato Rook. And I'm like, I'm so curious what's going on. But we get so little scenes involving him like maybe two minutes max every episode he's been in. And I'm like, I want to know more. I need to know more about what this gardener is planning, where he fits in the hierarchy of the DGP. Um, so like I said, we had a lot of good interactions from Ace and Punk Jack just talking and they were talking more. Ace even asked a whole bunch of questions. He's like, Hey, why was Nago brought back as an entry? Why was he gifted this super item? And then Punk Jack just says, he's like, I'm not going to tell you anything. The fox isn't fooling me today. And I was just like, you knew, you know, what Ace was trying to do. Because Ace the whole time, he's like, hey, if I'm, I don't have a driver, we're going to get eliminated. I'm going to have my memories erased. You might as well tell me, you know, what's going on. I'm going to forget anyways. And I'm like, but the round's not over, obviously. So you never know with Ace. Um, we get some more. It's always intriguing with Nan's character. Especially her, like, how she, like, you know, she was, you know, usually upbeat, like, you know, happy. And now back in the lounge, you know, she's self-doubting. She's, you know, doesn't think they're going to be enough to protect the world against the boss without Ace, you know. And then she even talks to Kayla about how she was brought back into the game. And she actually calls and asks, uh, or, well, not calls. She gets a flashback where she's sitting there with her two bodyguards, Ben and I believe John. Um, and even asks, like, if they had to choose on taking her side or her father's, which one would they pick? And they said, obviously, you, Nan, they'd pick her side. And I was like, okay, so we're getting, they're, they're definitely building up to Nan figuring out what's going on with her dad and that, and how that's tied in, but also the self-doubt because Ace has won so much. Does she, you know, does she think she can, you know, win? And you got, you know, Kawa, who's optimistic, um, but this episode was really honestly just revolving more around Punk Jack, the Game Master, and Ace, honestly. This was the main, you know, stuff is, you know, Punk Jack being a part of the staff, working for the Game Master. Ace obviously figured that out before Punk Jack even admitted it, and now Ace trying to get information out of him. Uh, we even see a scene where Punk Jack calls Game Master, and he's flat out like, hey, my job's done, get my ID core ready. And the Game Master even says, no, nah, that's not it. He's like... You're only getting that back if you become the desired deity. And even Punk Jack's like, that's not the agreement. And the Game Master is basically giving him a penalty because he revealed that he was working for the Game Master. And right at the bat, I was like, this is how we're going to get Punk Jack to turn on the Game Master. Because he's going to eliminate Ace, but now he doesn't get what he was promised unless he wins the whole thing. So now it's just like, yeah, you basically all but solidified Punk Jack is going to be a good guy now. And he even runs back to Sumer and he's like, hey, put me back in the game. The GM, the game master freaking backstabbed me. And we got what I think was some cool fighting sequences, if you can call it that. It was more like, okay, Punk Jack shows up and he starts fighting both the Jamato riders by himself in civilian form. And I want to say a fight because he was just getting his ass beat the whole time, like literally just thrown around, just stomped on, tossed, like just beat down like crazy until ace makes the save and they finally run away 
And, you know, he even asked, like, Ace even says Sumeri filled him in. And he asked why he saved him. And he says, listen, like, answer some questions. I have questions I need from you. He brings up why he wasn't able to write down meeting his mom on the desire card. Uh, you know, he even said that, hey, I did the wish for the star to the star of the stars because he was hoping to grab his mom's attention. And he never heard from her. And we're getting all this stuff. Like, Ace really has all these genuine questions thinking Punk Jack can answer them. And he's hoping that because Sumeri said, you know, hey, fill them in on what's going on. Maybe Punk Jack would kind of, you know, finally open up and answer some questions. Um, but we learn a lot about the DGP of this. Not full details, but just branching off different things of what's going on exactly. So when we go back to scenes with Kawa and Nan talking in the lounge, Kawa even asks if the DGP and the Kurama, Kurama, was it Kurama or Kurama? Conglomerate are connected. And then... Nan gets a call from John and Ben, her bodyguards, and they say they're in their father's office, and they found something, and they say it was two ID cores, and they said even that once they touched them, they got their memories back, and they were once common writers in the DGP, and we got a cool flashback of them posing and doing their henchins. We didn't get to see their forms, though, but I was like, it, obviously, all of us on the internet, Tom Constantine, we're all just like, this is awesome. A fan, He finally got to do a henchin. He's actually a common writer. Like, Big congratulations, Tim. Like, that is the dream. Usually we don't get a lot of foreigners into common art. But that was just cool to see. And Tom Constantine on Twitter was even saying, it's been a dream and this and that. So big congrats to him. That is awesome. It was great to see. And I hope we actually see more of that and see them become common writers on the actual show, suits and all. Um, so when um, they also find out that the conglomerate is a sponsor of the dgp and at the same time we find out more from punk jack his grandfather is a president of a major company that invested in the dgp and the reason why punk jack became a staff member that says he was in a lot of debt from his music and his grandfather gave him a job and that's and he was and basically he was forced to work for the dgp and he also says because ace this whole time talking about his mom he tells you know punk jack the only thing he remembers about his mom is his mom's name which is mitsumi and he says that name does ring a bell and that she was once the DGP navigator, which as you know, that's what Sumeri is. So Sumeri is the predecessor of Geet's mom. So um, and then even Ace says, well, who's the game master? And, you know, Punk Jack smirks, says, you should know you made a wish to make him family. And Ace smirks and says, yeah, he basically knew. And then he also reveals that he actually let Azuma take the driver in the last episode all this was a big plan because ace knew that punk jack believe if punk jack believed that ace was a loser and was going to lose the whole entire thing he would finally answer some questions so this was the plan the whole time and basically after talking you could punk jack is basically on board to be a team with geats and they're actually and, and actually try and go against the game master and so we finally get some action in the episode other than a few little fight scenes here and there we got like we got, you know, Nago, uh, Tycoon, and Buffa fighting everything. A Tycoon's still just the first form of the command. Got to get the energy on the sword to Henshin. Punk Jack and Ace showing up. Punk Jack gets the phone call. Literally asks, like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you know, why? And he even says, like, I'm going to do my part for world peace. Just like you asked. But I'm going to do it with Ace. And he says, eliminating Ace was your mission. And Punk Jack says, I'm done being your lackey. So we finally got that turned. Punk Jack is on the good guy's side against the DGP, which I said was, you know, in the last couple of years, this is one of the, that's the arc it, for Punk Jack, for the story and the character progression. He's either going to stay this way, because sometimes you get static villains who don't change. They're villains all their time. But you could see by the way everything progressing, the other option was he turns on the, the villain who's, you know, controlling him, basically. And that's what we got, which I was really cool with. Um, we saw Nan and Kewa both defeat two of the uh, Jamato Riders, releasing their drivers for Punk Jack and Ace, and Buffa's taking on the boss. And we finally get Kewa powering up enough to do the jet and cannon form for this command buckle. And I gotta say, his form, because of the way the helmet was, I feel like Kawa getting this form looks better than the Geats form of it. It doesn't seem as awkward because of the helmet shape difference. So I really like that. And 
you know, during this fight scene, we got a little, got a little more camera angles, the panning shots and this and that. I love when they do that so much. It's so enjoyable. And then, um, you know, we get, uh, punk Jack running up to his driver, picking up while Ace is about to, and we see the game master show up and Ace even calls him out by his name and he takes out the mask and he takes out the vision driver. Now I said, I got the desire driver. I got, you know, boost magnum and zombie buckle. I got some of the legendary rider ones. I said I was done. I wasn't going to get any more, but I need this vision driver. It looks so good, especially full led front panels. I'm a sucker for that. That's one of the reasons why I love the demons driver and revice. And I picked that up, but I need this driver and the engine he did. Like while I was watching the engine with a little clear color, like ID card swipe, I was like, you know what? Like I do need this driver. Like the whole time, the engine sequence and the form and everything. I was like, I need this because Commander glare. That suit is so clean. The black, the red, the purple on it. I was like, this is, this is a villain suit. This is peak right now. Like this is going to be one of my favorite suits of the Rewa era, like easily top five. And there's been a lot of suits with all different riders and different forms. Yeah, this is a top five of Rewa for me. And we see Punk Jack Henshin going to his monster form. He just gets bodied by Glare. Let's be, let's be honest here. Glare does zero effort to just destroy him. And then he does attack command with his belt. And one of like, he has different like shoulder spaldrons. You probably saw the, the clip because I put it in here. And one of them, like the things detach attaches to the helmet of punk Jack and hacks and takes over him. And I thought that was really cool. The downside is this whole entire time Ace didn't retrieve his driver and Kawa had defeated the boss and Ace is eliminated. And I was like, Hmm. One of two things are going to happen from a story standpoint. Kawa has to win because his wish is to bring back all previous eliminated riders. And I don't think Buffa would win because Ace is eliminated. And that would mean his whole power to destroy other common riders, his main, you know, foe, his equal and the snap is Ace and he's gone. So it's like, another thing is that mysterious guy from the last episode wasn't in this one. And since I'm given the DGP rule, which I'm going to go over really quick before I go into my theory. So the DGP rule we get revealed this week is the game master must not manipulate the outcome of the game for any reason. So going back to that, this mysterious guy who, you know, sent the, the twin command buckle to Ace last episode when he was talking to the game master saying, was he interfering in this and that? And the game master said, no, everything's going the way they're supposed to without any interference. He's obviously, cause he can watch everything. He sees the game master showing up and in henching. So this is a direct interference. So my thing is, he may either find a way to bring Ace back into it or Kawa wins. Those are the two realistic options that would bring Ace back. Cause obviously the show's called Common Art Geats. He's not gone forever, obviously. And I'm not going to go based off of the preview for next week's episode. I'm not even going to talk about that. I got to talk about just this episode. So with that being said, there's a lot that could be happening. I'm curious how an episode now without Geats as a common writer is going to be. My theory is obviously K was going to win because of how his wish is. But then if everyone who's eliminated is brought back, that's going to be intriguing from the standpoint of the gardener who has all these ID cores of everyone who's been eliminated and using them for Jamato. So there's a lot of moving parts right now from the story as well as, you know, we have a new corporation that invested in it, which is run by Punk Jack's grandfather. We have Nan's father, who's. Uh, f whose company is a sponsor of it. So we're starting to get all these moving parts, especially with the mysterious man, mysterious dude. So we have three companies that are somehow tied to the DGP, but let me know in the comments below what your theory is for what's going on in Geats. What'd you think of this episode? Were you shocked that ACE was eliminated this round? And what do you think about common or glare? Cause that suit is so good. And I love that driver. And I'm curious what everyone else thinks about it. But if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and like the video. Like I said, comment your thoughts and theories below. That's it for this review. Sorry it ran on longer than I wanted to, but there's a lot going on in this episode, and I even cut out some stuff I wanted to talk about. But I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.